during this century, in the lifetime of many of us, will be a dramatic explosion in our capacity to explore space, which will eventually transform how we think of humanity. Already we're finding incredible pictures and revealing data from the robots that landed on a comet and NASA's New Horizon probe that transmitted amazing pictures from Pluto, 10,000 times further away than the Moon. These two instruments spent 10 years on their journeys. The Cassini probe of Saturn is even more of an antique. It was launched more than 20 years ago. Think how much smartphones have advanced in the last 20 years and imagine how much better, therefore, we could do today and in the next decades. During this century, the whole solar system will be explored by flotillas of miniaturized probes, each far more advanced than anything we've invented yet and giant robotic fabricators will assemble vast, lightweight structures in space, perhaps using raw materials mined from the moon or asteroids. What about the role of humans? As technology gets more advanced, there'll be less need for humans to go into space. But I hope they will follow the robots, though it will be not for practical purposes, but simply as an adventure. And launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. We should specially acclaim the private enterprise efforts in space, SpaceX, Blue Origin and the rest. They can tolerate higher risks than a Western government could impose on publicly funded civilian astronauts and thereby cut costs compared to NASA or ESA. Later this century, courageous thrill seekers in the mold of, say, Felix Baumgartner, who broke the sound barrier in free fall from a high altitude balloon, may well establish bases independent from the Earth. By the end of the century, there may be a small community of such people living on Mars. They won't be normal people, they'll be crazy adventurers who are prepared to accept the high risks and also live in an environment far more hostile than the top of Everest or the South Pole. Space is not a place for normal people. That's why I strongly disagree that there should be mass emigration from the Earth to save us from the Earth's problems. We've got to solve those problems here. Dealing with climate change is a doddle compared to terraforming Mars. It's a dangerous delusion to think that we can escape Earth's problems by going to Mars. There's no planet B. Precisely because space is in an inherently hostile environment for humans, space pioneers will have far more incentive than us on Earth to redesign themselves. They'll harness the super-powerful genetic and cyborg technology that will be developed in the coming decades. These techniques will be heavily regulated on Earth, but the Martians will be far beyond the clutches of the regulators. So it's these spacefarers, not those of us comfortably adapted to life on Earth, who will spearhead the post-human era, evolving within a few centuries into a new species. It's taken four billion years for Darwinian selection to lead from simple protozoa to humans, but future evolution will happen not on a timescale of natural selection, more the timescale of technological evolution, therefore much faster. So in the billions of years in the future, we can expect far more changes than those that have taken biological life from single-celled organism to us. That's completely mind-blowing, but the minds of the future will be able to cope with things that are far beyond our grasp.